It is a very human thing to become close to the people that you're going through trouble with. It's spilled into us as a survival mechanism. The level of excitement, the risk, all the stuff starts changing how your brain functions, and it also helps with the distortion of reality. What traumatic bonding is, it is attaching to somebody who is hurtful to you. Our cultural awareness is getting broader and more people are sensitive to it. As a psychologist, what we do is we compile traits together and they become kind of a pattern in a person's life. And so five piles of data had commonalities of them. One of the kind of characteristics that emerged in our data is attraction to and seeking out untrustworthy people and staying in that. You're meeting people who aren't healthy or who are dangerous or will let you down. It's about the pattern of exploitation in the relationship. The second sign of an exploitive relationship is that you're not willing to look at the fact that bad stuff is happening and making excuses for it. But he's such a good man. He's such a good priest. He's such a good doctor. He does so many good things. But what that does is it allows you to overlook then the damage that's being done. The third pile that is common is their secrets. And the secrets are because you feel special. You feel that you belong to a special group or you've been singled out and that you're the only one that this happens to. Invariably you find out that you're not the only one invariably you find out that there was much more to the story than you knew. A fourth sign, and it's really important to understand because it's, it's what keeps us stuck. The chief chemist of the brain is fear. Fear will affect the attachment process in very profound ways. It's embedded in our culture to put yourself in precarious circumstances in terms of being attracted to people who are dangerous. If you find that you're in a relationship where you're having fights and you're trying to convince that person that the ways that he's behaving are bad or the ways she's behaving, because it happens the other way too, you may in fact be part of your problem. The final lump of data is that even though the relationship is over, you still think about it. You're still running through the arguments in your head. You still are talking to people about it. People will go five, eight, ten years still talking about a relationship that was awful. You literally have to let the feelings go through you. If it's grief you're feeling, sometimes you have to let your heart break. It's the only way is that you have to feel deeply in order to get over it. It's really important to be able to be on your own and have the resilience to have life problems and overcome them without finding someone who keeps you in fear in order to cope. At the Meadows here, there's a message of hope because we can point to the things that we know. If you see these signs in your life, I want you to know that there's many people who can address this therapeutically and there's programs you can come to. There is help for this.